Hey Ravens, welcome to today's sophomore edition of ONW Now. Today's ONW Now is produced by the sophomore video class of Ecom, who are headed into Convergence Journalism next year. That's right, we're happy to bring you this episode of ONW Now and many more to come. Let's get started. Last Friday, a fashion show was held right here at Olathe Northwest. Lee Volker has the story. Designing, creating, displaying. These are the key elements needed to put on a fashion show. Um, Textile Design 2 students there? displayed their knowledge, skills, and creativity at a fashion show held at O&W last Friday. So there are 10 of them that have created four outfits and gone through the entire design process, brainstormed inspiration, and gone all the way through creating the outfits. The students had the freedom to create outfits of their own style, but had to follow a certain theme. The overall look of the show um, is just kind of a color, a night theme with golds and blacks. After countless hours of work, the time came where they had to display their work at the show. Our time commitment and rush is really Project Runway style, crush, crushing at the end. For ONW Now, this has been Lee Volker. Now back to the desk. Amazing job to all the designers and models. Now, have you ever wondered the process of creating a short film? Video sophomores heading into entertainment have been working on short films for their final project of the year. Val Cartwright spoke to a group and has more. Have you ever wondered what goes into making a short film? Students in the sophomore AV class found out what it takes to make a short film for their final project. You create it through teamwork, your ideas, and it comes together to be about three to ten minute long video. The first step in creating a short film would be drawing the storyboard and script writing. <laughs> script writing is a time consuming but crucial part in the process of creating a short film. You need to start talking. Actors then bring the script to life during the production phase. The final step is editing. It's quite fun, actually. I love the process of making them. For ONW Now, this has been Val Carter. Now back to the desk. Expect great things from these students in the years to come. Now, many of you know Levi. He's just about the friendliest person in our school. We, we now get a glimpse into his daily life. Brooke Biasella has the story. I like smiling. You may all know Levi Buchholz from his positive attitude and bright smile, but you may not know about his struggle with cerebral palsy. His mother knows this firsthand. Levi is authentic because he consistently loves people, admires people, encourages people, and is consistently friendly. Levi has unique talents that make him stand out from the crowd. I am good at playing the instruments. He does play the piano, but he won't perform for anybody. And so, <laughs> so when we try to listen to him or record him or do something like that, he'll just freeze and, and won't play anymore. Wherever Levi's at, he inspires many people through his way of communicating. I like talking to people is doing, how people are doing. He really wants to talk to them. He really, so I think he takes the time that we're supposed to be taking to engage in people. He knows how to stop, get somebody's attention and really engage. And I think that's how he makes so many friends. His dream and goals for the future are similar to other students. I think he wants what other kids want. He talks about going to KU. He talks about wanting to get married and have children. I mean, he talks about all those things, and then we just say to him, okay, we're going to do our very best to get you there. His mother believes Levi will continue to have a positive outlook on life. I want him to have enough courage and strength and ability to be able to pursue his dreams. I believe in myself. For o and Now, this has been Brooke Biasella. Now back to the desk. Thanks, Levi, for bringing a bright presence to our school every day. With summer right around the corner, there's a lot more time for baseball. Here's Alex Gable with the story about one senior player. Back 
hats, gloves, and home runs are just some of Brooks Walker's favorite things about baseball. I've been playing baseball ever since I was five, so about 13 years now. Aside from hitting, he has other jobs in the field. For high school, they usually just throw me anywhere in the outfield during games. The high school season may be ending, but his career will continue on. In college, I'll get like on an intramural team and continue playing, but for competitive baseball, it's about to be over. Brooks' love for baseball won't stop him from being a fan of the sport. But I'm still going to be watching it all the time. Baseball will always be a part of him. It's some, a game I'll always enjoy for the rest of my life. And even though I'm about to be done playing it, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to enjoy it anymore. I'll still watch games and go to them because I love the game. This has been Alex Gable. Now back to the desk. Another great activity for the summer is swimming. Jessie Payne is in her first year of the diving team. Brooke Lindsay has more. Jessie Payne has placed in state for gymnastics the last two years. She has took these skills and is now qualified for state in diving. I think gymnastics benefits me with diving because you learn all the, like the twists and flips. You don't have to like learn that at the very beginning, and like it helps a lot because you're not really scared of like going backwards or going forward. Even though she is new to diving, she has learned new techniques that have helped her qualify for state as a junior. Um, the atmosphere of my team and our coach is really like a family-like environment. We all get along. We all like give each other tips and stuff. It's just like. It's really fun. State diving starts May 21st. Jesse hopes to bring home the state title for ONW. For ONW Now, this has been Brooke Lindsay. Now back to the desk. Great job, Jesse. Now let's take it to Word from the Halls with Brooke and Austin. Who is the first Disney princess? Cinderella. Ah, uh, Cinderella, maybe, I think. Me. Ariel. Snow White. Snow White. What Disney princess has the most kills? Most... what? I didn't know princesses could kill. It can't be Snow White again. No. I'm gonna go with Rapunzel. Uh... Pocahontas. Cinderella. Where does Peter Pan live? Neverland. Uh, Neverland. Neverland. Neverland? Netherland. Neverland. The Enchanted Forest. What weapon does Rapunzel use in Tangled? Her hair. A horse or something, right? Or no, a hairbrush. Hairbrush. Right? No? Okay. <laughs> what is the name of Mulan's dragon? Mulan. Mufiki. Nope. It's like hummus or something. Mushu? Mushu? I've never seen Mulan. It's like red or something. That's all we have for you today, Ravens. We're excited to bring you on W Now for the years to come. That's right. For Lee Vilcourt, I'm Brooke Biasella. Have a great summer, Ravens. We can't wait to see you all next year.